uh, as a producer is very unconventional because you've been kind of a, a high profile film producer, but as well, very kind of a social impact driven and as well focus on, on creating all these elements of uh, social impact, uh, creating causes on looking at these things, documentaries and things like that. So um, can you tell a bit about the, the way you've been producing and the way you make your choices? Because I think that's particularly important, especially in a time of blockbusters where cinema is kind of merging into the, the kind of the streaming houses and so forth. Yes, no, it's, it's very true, Dennis. You know, I choose projects, uh, they, they come to me, but of course there is a choice. A lot of projects, a lot of script comes to you and, and you have to discern. And to me, you see, I'm a storyteller. I really like what, what does a story does in life? Does it inspires you? Does it drive you forward? Does it make you think different? So to me, uh, the story, whatever story I take has to have that element to drive forward, to inspire, but on, not only that, but to challenge. And the first one that takes the challenge is me. I usually choose projects that are extremely impossible to make for me in that moment in my life, you know, not in general, but like, I, I want to tell you the story of that documentary, One Rock, Three Religions, you know, it's on Amazon now, right now, and it won many, many awards, including the US Congress Award and the Human Rights Award and many others. But uh, when, when uh, it was presented to me, uh, this young director, Isaac Hertz, came to me and he's a, a, a young Orthodox uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Jewish Orthodox, and came to me. And this was right after I finished the Oscar campaign for the Butterfly's Dream. And he told me, I saw your work and I would like you to produce a, a documentary about the Temple Mountain. And I looked at this amazing, beautiful young human being that looked at me with such honesty, with such genuinity. And I, I just, my heart opened, but at the same time, I had to be very objective to say, Isaac, you know, I love that you come to me with that and that you saw my work, but I don't think I'm the right person to tell that story because I'm not, I'm not Jewish and I'm not Palestinian. So I think if you'd have to tell that story, you have to have a little bit of that history inside your, your veins. And he's insisting and he's insisting. I was like, no, but look, I saw how you work. I saw the person you are and stuff. I, I'm convinced you're the right person. So I, and I thank God I did, I took a week. I said, look, I mean, you, you, you opened my heart because I could see how genuine this guy was. I said, um, let me think for a week. And in that week, Dennis, it occurred to me that my best goal in life, no matter what was the achievement, came from a state of very difficult uncomfortability, where I felt so uncomfortable to face the challenge, where I didn't know anything about it, where I had to really walk outside my shoes, outside my comfort zone to achieve that and learn. And based on that feeling, I went back to Isaac and I said, yes. Being obviously aware that this journey had a lot of learning for me because I realized right away, this wasn't just a documentary about a topic. This was becoming a movement that was uh, to be with presidents, with United Nations, with diplomatics, with the US Congress, uh, with people that you had to really stamp your passport to speak with not only to interview them, but to be even seen by them. And so, uh, so I started this journey uh, with, with incredible humility because I understood this is something I do not know. This is something I have to learn from scratch. So let's start this journey. But when in a storytelling, you know, even the Cinderella story, there is that kind of enlightening moment that says to you, if you do approach with that kind of a candid spirit, the universe helps you. And it's always been like that. I'm a firm believer that an artist has to have this, this belief ingrained 
inside their instrument, you know? So there we go. I read on the paper when we just started shooting that the Pope just went to Israel and pray uh, at the wall uh, and, um, and asked the two presidents, President Shimon Peres and President uh, Mahmoud Abbas to pray together at the Vatican. I said, that's it. That's how we have to start this documentary. But of course, who could grant me the permission to be at this historical event that uh, security was so high, not even a plane was allowed to fly over Italy in the week these two presidents were in Rome. I mean, it was insane. So, you know, I, I had to recover to my humanity, to my human resources, and, uh, and I Googled the Pope. It's, it's exactly how I did it. <laughs> I Googled the Pope, the Vatican, and I found out that there were 30 minutes every day that the Vatican would take phone calls. Obviously, most of these phone calls were to visit the Vatican garden and so on, you know, stuff like that. So I, at three o'clock in the morning, Los Angeles time, I call the Vatican and I start to speak with the nun. And, and right away it came very obvious to me, Dennis, that no matter what I would say, my credit, my name, legacy, whatever, it was completely irrelevant to this nun. So eventually, you know, she passed me to the director of the press office, Father Lombardi, with which I started what I call my 10 nights confession. In fact, <laughs> this guy <laughs> would this guy would take me for these 30 minutes on a journey, a very intimate personal journey that had nothing to do with the film. It was about my personal choices, my life, uh, my feelings, uh, my relationship with uh, my kid, uh, my family, and on and on, my beliefs. And at the end of the 30 minutes, every night, three o'clock in the morning, I remember it. <laughs> Uh, it would tell me, okay, Valentina, let's continue this conversation tomorrow. Call me back. And this went on for 10 nights until we were like three days, I swear to God, three days before this historical event. And I'm like, Father Lombardi, I mean, now it's been 10 nights that we're talking. We have to make a decision in here on how to go farther on. Uh, we have this, this meeting coming up and I have a crew that had to pass all security, CIA, forget it. And it's like, very well, you're going to be the only one filming at the Vatican. And there we were three days later with Pope Francis in the Vatican garden and these two presidents. And that's how it goes. And I tell this story to young filmmakers that always believe, oh, but if you are not somebody, if you don't have enough money, if you don't, it's the story that has to carry you, not vice versa. You have to find a way where the story is carrying you, where there is a thread that you are following, just like uh, Ansel and Gretel with the little white stones in the story, you know, like just like Cinderella with the with the fairy coming up and putting the, the dress and knowing that at midnight the dress is gone. You know, you have to follow the story. You have to find the thread. I believe that a leader is uh, leading people, but a leader is led by his own cause. So in my case, is the film is leading me. The story of the film is leading me. And since that moment, of course, you know, if we thought that we were just five filmmakers believing in an idea, after if the Pope was believing in us, we understood that we, we were a tribe around the world wanting to make it happen. The film obviously won 18 international awards, uh, the US Congress, da, da, da. And, uh, and since then, obviously the courage of believing in a story, the courage of breaking boundaries and finding subjects that are uncomfortable or maybe um, unleaked by society yet, uh, uh, drove an appetite in me for sure.